Good morning. It is Monday morning again, and we are now in March. I believe today might be the 13th of March, and it does not feel like spring where I am. The calendar is getting closer. The calendar says in eight days, so next Monday, and I'll be looking forward to that one, that we will be in spring. So I'm looking forward to the actual weather outside matching that calendar declaration. But nonetheless, here we are, and time, the warmth will come, and I'm sure before long I'll be complaining about the heat. But let me introduce myself. My name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Christian churches in Iliopolis and Niantic, Illinois. I'm the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries, an outreach effort, a combined energy of both of those churches, and the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast, where we encourage people to lean in and overcome those difficult situations and experiences in life, inspired by the stories of others who have and the love and support of faith community. With that said, today I want to talk a little bit about happiness. Our Constitution does not guarantee us happiness. Our Constitution guarantees us light, or, um, I should say, life. I had this all set. But anyway, forget the eloquent elocution of those words. And let's just say we are guaranteed constitutionally the pursuit of happiness. And a lot of people get caught up in the pursuit of that happiness and come up short. You know, where do you go looking for happiness? A lot of people have traveled all over the world looking for it. And one thing we do know right now is that there are so many things that indicate that as a people, we're not real happy. Anxiety as it is at an all-time high right now, uh, following pandemic and all of the things that went with that, there are a lot, there's a lot of upheaval, a lot of anger, and a lot of things working against happiness in our lives these days, and a lot of things that are cranking up that anxiety for folks. We are starting to talk about mental health, and for that I am so thankful. But we also need to start talking about spiritual health. Spiritual poverty, I would say, and I'm going to go right out there on a limb, is the root of a lot of anxiety and a lot of unhappiness that we have right now. Whether or not you are religious, we are spiritual beings and we have a spiritual health component to us to tend to. And when we don't, we experience spiritual poverty. And I think that that's what a lot of people have these days, the spiritual poverty that is showing up in anxious moments and a lot of other things as well. And so my focus these days is to talk about those spiritual gifts, those spiritual things inside of us that can help us find a better balance in life, better joy and more happiness today. I want to talk about gratitude. Gratitude is one of those things that is free to us. In the pursuit of happiness, we can spend a lot of money and a lot of effort traveling far and wide and doing a lot of hobbies and a lot of things. And those are fantastic. I love those, all of those things myself. But I do know that one of the things that makes me happiest in life is the choices I make within myself each day on how I will approach that day. We can go forth in life and find a thousand reasons to be angry or mad, upset or bitter. We can also find 10,000 reasons to be joyful and full of light and thankful for what's before us. I choose the latter. I choose to be thankful. I choose to focus on the things that are going well, the things that are not going well. They're, they will get my attention as necessary anyway, but I choose to go through life oriented toward light, life, and love. Those things are my guiding stars, if you will. So how do we make 
uh, gratitude a priority. You know, we've all heard start a journal, count your blessings, all of those things. And those are fantastic methods. I use them. But I want to point out a couple other ways, fun ways, that you can get more gratitude in your life. One of those is to have a little gratitude box, a change that can collect change. Find a little piggy bank, however simple or fancy you want it to be, whether it's a, a jar that uh, doesn't quite fit in the cabinet or a cup that you don't use as much, but you like that mug, whatever it is, or go all out and make a make a little box and put a little slit in the top and put a fun picture on it, whatever it is, and collect at your spare change whenever you feel a blessing. And bonus points if you intend to give that towards something you care about. Are you a dog owner, cat owner, and you love animals? Maybe have a goal to fill that box and donate it to your local shelter. Uh, are you involved in different ministries in your church? Fantastic. Fill up that box and donate it to your church. Is there something at your kid's school that would benefit from that extra change? Great. Make that the goal. But have a goal, uh, something that you love, that you feel passionately and intimately connected to, something that you feel makes a difference. And whenever you feel gratitude or whenever you have a blessing to count, put the, just put a quarter or put some spare change into that box. And you'll find that you'll be filling it more and more quickly as time goes on because gratitude breeds gratitude. Gratitude gets our focus off of what is lacking and onto what is present. And when we are aware of what is present, my friends, we notice so many good things in our lives. So that is one thing, one option. Collect spare change for blessings and share it with a cause that is close to your heart. The second one, start thinking about Thanksgiving. I know it's in November, and that is what we are in the third month. November is the 11th month, so that's eight months away. And start uh, thinking about creating a centerpiece for your Thanksgiving table. Do you want a tall cylindrical type uh, centerpiece? Uh, do you want a big jar? Whatever it is, start thinking about it and the colors you might like. Uh, do you want to use little colored stones or natural stones or different kinds of paper in there? Whatever it is. And whenever you feel a blessing or whenever you encounter something that helps you to feel gratitude, toss it in that centerpiece. And by the time Thanksgiving comes, you will have a beautiful centerpiece for your table that is filled with with the joy and the blessings of the year that led to that feast. You will be gathered to give thanks around the blessings that have accumulated in your life thus far. And there are a lot of different other ways that we can go about this too, but those are a couple fun ways that we can make tangible the gratitude in our lives and acknowledge the blessings in our lives. So I encourage you to take one of those and run with it. Also, I want to inquire on how your Lenten disciplines are going. For those of you who engage in Lent to grow spiritually, I wanted to give you an update on what I'm doing and to ask how it's going for you. For me, I find that in the winter months, in the colder months, uh, devotionals are a great place for me to find that solace. I have a uh, a harmony, a gospel, a, I have a Bible, I have a hundred Bibles, but I have one that's a harmony of the gospels and it is divided into 40 days. So I read that each day, a little bit of Jesus to start my day. And then I have a devotional that goes along with it. And also it's 40 days. So those two have been my companions during Lent. They have been enriching. They have invited me to think and to act. So that's what I've been up to. 
been, as you can probably hear, I've been dealing with a little bit of crud, as has most of our families, most of the members in my family, but we are trudging through and getting along just fine. Uh, these devotionals and these disciplines help. I'm looking forward to getting back outside. I like it to be just a little bit warmer uh, when I go outside and walk. And being outside is really what, what benefits my soul. So if you're in a place where you can be outside right now, uh, I'm happy for you. I hope that that can speak to your soul as well. So let me know wh what you have going on for Lent, how those are supporting you, or maybe they're not. Uh, let me know that too. What's working, what's not working, and let's form a little community of support here as we seek to uh, embrace the good things in life and connect with that higher power. So that's my wish for you this week. I hope all goes well, and I hope that you have more blessings than you can count. I'll see you next week in spring. Bye for now.